Hello, I'm just going to do a quick review on the Ruckman Reference Bible. The one I have here in front of me is a three-piece calfskin, which I don't believe they have for sale right now. They go through cycles of what types they have for sale. Um, but I paid 160 for this one, I believe. But it's really nice. It's a calfskin. It's got the nice leather on the front. I mean, on the flap. It's the front of the Bible. And, as you can see, it has the wrinkles. The more you use it, the more it looks like skin. And on the back, there's the back. And it's very flexible. Very flexible. This Bible that I have has two ribbon markers. And you can get this Bible at the Bible Baptist Bookstore. Okay. Alright, let's get into pages here. It has one... Is it thick? Two, three. About three big white pages in the front for notes, so that's nice. Then a presentation page. Um, this is the title page here with this neat little emblem on it. Then it has the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament in their order. So. There's that. Has a preface from the King James Bible. An introduction to the first edition and subsequent editions. Okay, so this is the introduction to the Bible in the Old Testament by Ruckman. So this is what he says as soon as you open up. And then you're at Genesis. This is Ruckman's overview of Genesis. Here's the text. And then here's his notes down here. So, and the nice thing about this, obviously, since he's got a general overview of each book, all your books start on a fresh page. So when you get to Exodus, it has its own page. So that's nice. Notes. Chronicles. Ooh, Chronicles. <laughs> I haven't read that book in a while. You need to push through it. Begat, begat, begat. Matthew, Acts. Yeah, so here we go. Whoops. There's Revel. Whoa. Look at this. This is the overview of Revelation. Whole page and a quarter. Yeah, so that's a big overview of Revelation. That's the, it takes up the whole page and a little bit more than the next one. Yeah, that would be good. I'm trying to get to the appendices here. Okay, here's the epilogue to the Bible. Okay, there's your appendices. Table of contents. The Hebrew names for God in the Old Testament. Elohim, uh, God, and Exodus 4. Okay, so there's that name, the names given for man and sin. He's got a lot of good appendices back here. So, um, you could spend hours just reading what he's got in the back here. New Jerusalem, that'd be a good one. That's what we got to look forward to. If you're saved, that is. Baptist Writers, uh, the term only begotten, uh oh, <laughs> America, a nation led by women. That is our downfall, and I'm a woman, not a feminist, I just am biblical. That is the downfall when you have children running things and women running things, I'll tell you that much. 
Okay, let me see. Abraham's original land grant. Okay, here's all these. Wow, these are nice, thick, colorful maps in the back here. There's, I don't know how many of them, my goodness. There's a ton of them though. Look at that stack. Yeah, there's a ton of maps in the back. Never seen a Bible with so many. So if you like Bible geography, Bible, there you go, Bible geography, you'll like all those maps in the back there. Awesome. Then we're back to our notes. There's about three pages back here also for notes. Obviously, this is a uh, very controversial Bible. If you don't know, Peter Ruckman is a King James Version only person, and uh, a lot of people don't agree with that. He takes it to the extreme of, well, extreme in the world's eyes, I should say. It's not extreme to me. I believe the same thing, that this Bible corrects the original Greek and Hebrew text. And it makes sense, because you have to have a final authority. You start getting messed up because you try to go back to the Hebrew and Greek, and how many ways it can translate, and blah, blah, blah. This is the perfect word of God. If you stick with the King James Bible... Um, you won't have any problems. You stick with inside of it. You don't go, oh, well, in the Greek you could have translated it this way and that way. And in the Hebrew, and you'll never have a Bible then. <laughs> you will never have a Bible if you wait on scholars to uh, try and figure out what the Bible should say and what it shouldn't say and blah, blah, blah. They're just trying to be dishonest and insincere. They want to be Indiana Jones and go after all these manuscripts and... I guess that, um, I mean, I'm not a big manuscript evidence, and I mean, I don't know all this stuff, like, very deep or anything, but I was just reading Gail Ripplinger's book, and they, they find, like, pieces, and the pieces match what the King James Version already says. Isn't that crazy? So... <laughs> The Lord knew what he was doing, so then the new Bibles, who think they know everything, have to change it to what the King James Bible already says. So, um, it's just funny. But, stick with the good King James Bible. If you want a good King James Bible, go with the Ruckman reference. You won't go wrong. Uh, his notes in here. I showed you where they're at, but I didn't really read any to you, so let me see. Just to give you a little taste. What's a real controversial... Psalm 12 is real controversial for the King James camp. So I'll give you a little hint of what he says there. Here's what he says, Psalm 12, 7. Verses 6 and 7 prove that the doctrine of the preservation of the words, plural, of God is just as important as the doctrine of the verbal plenary inspiration of the words, plural, of God. Quite naturally, there is a 100% cooperative ecumenical lineup against these verses by every major Christian institution of higher learning and every modern translation on the market. To abort this promise that God would preserve his words so you would have them, the scholars violate all Hebrew texts and translate the word them as us, so you will skip the antecedent in the verse 6, the words of the Lord, and go to the verse 5 for the words poor and needy. That way, they don't have to worry about God preserving his words so they can replace them with their own words. So that's a little nugget for you there uh his notes are like that he's big on the king james bible so if you're big on that too or need some answers about it this would definitely be the place to go because he's got notes all through here so i'm gonna look real quick another big verse uh I'm trying to think john 3 16 is a good one because they take out begotten and just put one and only or only son which is not true but let's see if he says anything about that. John 3.16, there it is. All new Bibles, yep. <laughs> Mistranslate the Greek word for only begotten. They translate the, I don't know what that is, part only. <laughs> Obviously it's Greek, I don't know. But refuse to translate begotten. This creates a lie. Jesus Christ was not God's only son. See note on Luke 3.22, God had all kinds of sons that were not begotten. Hebrews 1, 5, and 6. So, yeah, I mean, it's a good 
King James only Bible. Ooh, see, there's the gilding. I didn't show you that. Nice gold gilding on the sides. So, you can see. But yeah, if you want a good King James Version only Bible, then uh, get the Ruckman Reference Bible from Bible Baptist Bookstore. I think what they have on there now is a burgundy colored calfskin, a blue calfskin with silver edged gilding, and then a regular. Not the three piece like mine, but a regular. Oh, I don't think it's calfskin. I think it's lambskin, actually. So uh, just pull up their website. They have all different kinds now. I got mine last year. So they have hand sized, they have wide margin, and then they have this. And they have um, vinyl ones. So if you don't want to spend $160 on it or $140, I can't remember what I paid for it, but. Um, if you want to uh, do a more economical purchase, they do have like hardbacks and then a vinyl one. So uh, that gives you several options if you're interested in the Ruckman Reference Bible. And I actually have more Ruckman Reference Bibles than this one. So I can do reviews on the wide margin next and then the cowhide and then regular calfskin. Hopefully this helps you guys out.